For optimal aiming performance, should your wrist be in contact with the desk or should it hover? Here at Kovacs, we highly recommend keeping the wrist in contact with the desk. And in this video, we'll cover the best technique and how to get the most out of it. The problem with hovering is that you are sacrificing control. It's the same reason why we rest our hand on a surface when handwriting. If you try to write something while hovering, it becomes unstable and imprecise. This is why it's recommended to also have your arm in contact with the desk when aiming. With your arm and wrist floating, you will suddenly feel the muscles in your hand, forearm, upper arm and shoulder activate. These muscles are no longer directly contributing to your aiming action. Instead, they're just trying to keep things afloat and over a session they will fatigue and they will stop listening to you properly. Now, when we say wrist, what we really mean is this general area around the lower palm. Being able to place this on the desk will require a suitable mouse grip. For more info on that, check out our mouse grip video in the description. What to avoid here is having a high and forward mouse grip that would make contact impossible. What you don't want to do with this contact is to plant your wrist in one spot. This will severely limit your range of motion, the mouse sensitivities that you can use, and the number of muscles that contribute to your aim. Okay, so what's the best technique to use for wrist contact? This contact needs to stay mobile to properly play its part in the aiming action. In game, your arm's job is to point you at your target. Your wrist will control the bulk of the aiming right in front of you, while the fingers help with precision and your smaller aiming movements. You need to allow each component of the chain all the way from your back, your chest, shoulder, into your arm and hand to play their own role. As soon as you hover that wrist or plant it on the desk, you're effectively removing it from that chain and forcing the other components to pick up the slack and do jobs they're not suited for. To see the difference in your performance between hovering and contact, jump into Kovacs and play Air Invincible 2. The difference in control between the two techniques should be immediately noticeable. And there we have it. We hope you found this video helpful. Let us know your thoughts in the comments below. Subscribe for more content like this, and we'll catch you in the next one.